Hello again. So I want to do a lesson on quadratic systems. Basically, when we talk about linear systems, we talk about where two lines intersected. Uh, they might have never intersected, they might have intersected once, or they might have always intersected. Well, we can do that with quadratic systems, too. Uh, this first equation right here is a circle. I know it's a circle because the centers are there, the radius is, you know, the square root of 13. I don't know what that is off the top of my head. And this one is now a quadratic system. It's x squared plus 4y squared equals 25. It's an ellipse. I know it's an ellipse because uh, what I have to do is I get, have to get it set equal to 1 because these values aren't equal, so it can't be a circle automatically. You know, the x squared and the y squared have to be the same. There has to be, the same number has to be underneath the x squared and the y squared. If you look back at the form for an ellipse, a hyperbola um, circle, you see it. Or a parabola in general. Anyways, so what I do is I divide this by 25, 25, 25. The form of this second one is x squared over 25 plus y squared, eh, 4y squared over 25. I'd say divide 4 by 25 and it's y squared over 6.25, but technically speaking, that's not even sound theory in the first place because you can't have anything but a natural number anyways. Equals 1. This is a uh, ellipse, this is a circle, so like if I were to draw it, maybe it would look something like this. And, you know, that's a maybe. I, I don't really know. Hey, it looks like uh, Saturn. Okay. I don't know where they intersect, but what I can do is I can use techniques of substitution and elimination to figure out what it is. And if I do it properly, I'll be fine. And I'm not going to do it using this one. I'm going to do it using the original green equation for the ellipse. I'm not going to sit there and struggle, try to figure out what I can already figure out very easily. So I have x squared plus y squared equals 13, and x squared plus 4y squared equals 25. What I can do is multiply one of these by a negative 1. Technically, you could just subtract and do them. Um, well aware of that, but I'm going to multiply one of these by negative 1 so I can cancel out one of the terms. See, if I multiply this by negative 1, then I'll have negative x squared minus y squared equals negative 13. And if I do that, I'll have that, and then I'll have x squared plus 4y squared equals 25. Bam! x squared and x squared cancel out. Negative 1y squared plus 4y squared is 3y squared. And negative 13 plus 25 is 12. Divide by 3, y squared equals 4. Take the square root of both sides. y can equal 2, or y can equal negative 2. Those are my two values for y. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this information to figure out my x value. Now you can uh, substitute into either one that you want. The one that's actually easier in my opinion is the first green equation. Let me get rid of this negative one. It's going to make things bothersome. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to substitute it into the first quadratic um, equation of the systems, I guess. I don't know. Whatever you want to call it. Technically, well, it is degree 2. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So when I substitute that in, I'm going to do it for uh, two different cases. Because there's two different y values. So I got x squared plus 2 squared is 4 equals 13. And x squared plus negative 2 times negative 2 is Four equals thirteen. Subtract four on both sides. Subtract four on both sides. X squared equals nine. X squared equals nine. Well, okay, you know it's whatever. Not too big of a deal yet. Let's take the square root of both sides. X equals plus three. X equals negative three. In this one, x equals 3, x equals negative 3. There are four possible solutions that I can pick. And 
Here's a way of thinking about it. Well, I could put 3 and 2. I can put 3 and negative 2 because it's plus or minus 3. Or I can put negative 3 and 2. Or I can put negative 3 and negative 2. And if you look at it, it can actually intersect four times. In this case, one, two, three, four. So you can have four solutions, which is really cool. And when you work with uh, higher degree functions, you can even get more answers. I don't know if you want to, but yeah, well, there's something for you to think about. So four different answers. There's four different solutions. Uh, with that said, have a great day for now.